A recent report suggests that statewide, we may be shortchanging local streets, roads, and bridges by as much as $78 billion. What is the current condition of local streets, roads, and bridges in California? And what do we need to do to improve them, or at least keep them from getting any worse? We'll talk to Mike Penrose, the president of the County Engineers Association of California, that recently reported on the state of the state's local streets and bridges, and warned that if Californians don't start paying for repairs now, they'll be paying a lot more later. California's local streets and roads, filling the funding pothole. Additional funding for the Maddie Report made possible by a grant from The Wonderful Company, harvesting health and happiness around the world. From the California Channel at the State Capitol and the Maddie Institute, it's the Maddie Report with Executive Director of the Maddie Institute, Mark Kepler. When you drive on local streets and roads, you probably wonder if they've gotten better or worse over the years. We actually have the person that can answer that question, not just that question, but can tell us what's going to happen in the future uh, with our roads. That's Mike Penrose. He's the president of the County Engineers Association of California. Welcome. Thank you. So um, can you give us a general overview on local streets and roads in California? How many miles? Um, are they mostly in urban, rural? Um, are cities more responsible? Are counties more responsible? What's the picture? Okay, so the overall picture is, is any uh, road that is not a state highway facility in, in the state of California is what we consider a local road. Those local roads, uh, the responsible owners and maintainer and operator of those are the cities and counties, as you referenced. Uh, cities and counties have about 143,000 center lane miles of roadway. That's one way to measure them. Mm -hmm. uh, and of those 143,000, cities have about 60% of that in terms of their responsibility, and counties own about 40%. Okay. A lot of miles. A lot um, of miles. That's right. So you guys do what's something called a California Statewide Local Streets and Roads Needs Assessment. Um, when did that start and why was it necessary? Well, um, the needs assessment is a study that documents the local transportation network's condition and funding needs uh, to maintain and operate the system in a sustainable best practice condition over time. The first assessment was done in 2008 uh, and it's been updated every two years since that time. So the most recent study that we'll be talking about today was completed in 2014. And you have something called a pavement condition index, mm -hmm. a PCI that I learned about. Um, and the PCI you want generally what in the, it doesn't need to be 100, it needs to be what, like the low 80s, I think I read? That's correct, yes. Oh. So overall, to set the spectrum for that, a PCI of zero is a failed road, and a PCI... That's a very failed road. That's right. It's just, <laughs> it's just a mess, really not very passable, and 100% is basically a new road condition. We like to have the overall system at a, in the low 80s to be in, a, in what we consider a good condition, very well passable. It's one that you can maintain at a lower cost, those types of things. Yeah, I think you were talking about, talking about best maintenance practices, and mm -hmm. you want it to be at a certain level so you can actually maintain, not completely replace. That's correct. Um, so what we're really talking about here is preventive maintenance, yes. um, and quite literally, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure kind of thing. Um, if we keep our roads in good enough shape so they can be repaired rather than replaced, how much money are taxpayers going to save? Well, um, it kind of depends. With the, you know, the methodology that you can, or what you compare it to. But in general terms, if we could, over the next 10 years, bring our transportation system up to a PCI condition of, of the low 80s, and it's not there now, it's in the mid-60s, uh, we could forestall or actually eliminate a, uh, about a $61 billion uh, unmet needs uh, deficit that's out there now. And what that means is there's a bunch of improvements that should be made to bring the system up to a good condition. If we do that, then we're going to eliminate that $61 billion deficit. Uh, Shortfall. Deficit. Yeah. Shortfall. Um, and I was reading in your report that it takes 12 times less to maintain pavement than to replace it. So, you know, and there's some of the reports, some of the stuff in your report indicates that it's $5 uh, for rehab versus $60 for reconstruction, just to give people kind of a, a juxtaposition, a difference. It's quite a bit more when you're rebuilding a Significant, a yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what are the current uh, conditions of local streets and roads? So our overall statewide condition is that we have the PCI of 66, um, which is... It's in an area that we call at risk, <clears throat> so it's, uh, it's at a point where if you don't do much work on it, it's going to significantly degrade in a shorter period of time where the costs will do just what you suggested. They would go from very low expenditure to keep it in good condition to a very high expenditure. And I think, I think when I was reading your report, one of the terms you use is edge of the cliff. Yes. Um, so we're, we're not over the cliff yet, nope. but we're very close to it. We're moving towards it. That's we're moving correct. Toward, yes. Okay. Um, is it me or our, our local roads seem to be failing more frequently and, and more quickly? Uh, you know, what are the factors that are contributing to 
the uh, faster deterioration of roads over well, time? I don't think it's just you. I think that is the fact that we are seeing them declining or degrading more rapidly. And some of the factors that affect it is that we have more traffic these days than, we, than we've had ever. We have heavier loads on our roadway. We have more transit with more frequent bus uses on the road, which are uh, the, tr the buses are also getting heavier because of, uh, of uh, fuel changes that we're making. Right, so in when them. they move from, from diesel to natural gas exactly. or whatever, it's... Yeah, that's right. And then we're doing more street sweeping, which it doesn't seem like it would do something, but it actually does help pull up the surface and degrade the roadway to some extent. Uh, we have more freight and delivery trucks when the economy is thriving. And uh, as the roadway system gets older and we're not able to maintain it, we begin to move into that area of the life of a pavement where it degrades more quickly also. So it's a combination of all those factors that's really impacting our road. Yeah. Um, it seems like streets are more costly to build and maintain these days, um, and not just because of inflation. Um, there are other costs, other things, other factors that are driving up cost. What are they? Well, some of the, some of the ones that, w that are very prominent now is that we're building what we would call complete streets. And it's not necessarily a new concept, but it's where a regular roadway now includes bicycle, transit facilities, pedestrian facilities. Um, there's also a new ADA requirements, although they've been around for a while, they're really getting implemented aggressively now. Uh, and those add additional costs to it. Uh, there are additional features that we have to build into the roadways to deal with pollutants and capture those pollutants. It's really the drainage systems and sign reflectivity requirements of all. All those things are adding additional cost to the system. And, and there's always population increases. That's correct. Yes. Um, so, okay, well, thanks for the overview yeah. of the condition of local streets and roads. Up next, what are we spending to maintain our streets and roads? And is it enough? That conversation in a moment. This is the Matty Report. What do we currently spend on maintaining our local streets and roads, and is it enough? We're talking with Mike Penrose, who's the president of the County Engineers Association of California. So how much do we currently spend to maintain our local streets and, and roads? The current funding level is about $1.7 billion a year to maintain the transportation system. Sounds like a lot of money, but my understanding is from your report that the value of roads, though, is $188 billion. That's correct. So we're, we're spending, you know, like south of... Uh, less than a percent. Less than a percent. Yeah. That's quite a bit less than you'd expect. Mm -hmm. So what's it being spent on? Uh, generally, it, when we're talking about roadway maintenance, we're talking about doing preventative maintenance, which includes slurry seals and chip seals that people see on the roads and outside of their homes now, as well as all the way to full re road reconstruction. So Are, are types. you seeing more of... of uh, operations and maintenance expenditures increasing over time? Yes, we are, yeah. Again, because the infrastructure is getting older, and as it does that, and we haven't done the appropriate maintenance to bring it in a good state of condition, it's costing more and more as we come back to fix it. So where does the money come from to do all this work? Uh, well, really, kind of three categories is the way we think about it. One's federal, the other is state and local. Okay. And um, the state and local funding makes up almost 90% of the funding that we apply to our road maintenance. Um, what about the feds? I mean, they, they, the federal government did provide a lot of money at one time with the Stimulus Act, correct? They have, yes. It's been, they've been isolated shots of, of funds that have come, but an overall funding strategy for the maintenance of our transportation system, it's a very small portion. So when you're, you're, so. you're planning, you're not planning on, on the federal government to provide a lot of money there. We are not. You're pr probably planning about 10 percent is what you're saying. That's correct. Um, Okay, so, uh, but you said uh, local and state are about 90%. That's right. Uh, which is the larger of the two? The biggest portion is the, the state gas tax, which we'll be talking more about today. But okay. it, it makes up about 55% of that 90%. The balance is the local, local revenue sources, which often are, are local sales tax measures. Okay, so, so you said we spend about $1.7 billion a year uh, to maintain roads. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's the projected shortfall? If we're spending that much and you're saying roads are 66 a rating of 66 and you want it to be at a rating of 80, um, what's, the, what's the problem there? Is there going to be a big shortfall over the next 10 years? There will be a significant shortfall. And the, uh, the uh, report that we prepared identifies for pavements alone about a $56 billion shortfall. And we'll be talking about a number of other shortfalls today, which will get us to a different total number. But that's related okay. to pavement. Just the that's pavement it. itself. Is pavement alone. That's $56 right. Billion. About $56 okay, billion. so you, you and your report lay out three different scenarios of what could happen in terms of, of funding levels. Mm -hmm. um, what would happen if we just stayed at the current funding levels of $1.7 billion a year? Uh, the system will continue to decline. One of the, the current condition of the system is at a PCI of 66. 
it would decline down to about a PCI of 55. It's the at-risk area. Uh, it means the pavement is continuing to decline with a greater expenditure to bring it back in, in, into a good state of repair. The backlog, the unfunded mm -hmm. backlog, will increase by 50% to about wow. $61 billion. That's work that we didn't get to that needs to be done. And the number of failed road conditions in our overall system. Right now we have about 6% of the roads are in what we call the failed condition. Some are in brand and new And when condition. you say failed, what does that mean? It really means that the road is, is, is badly broken up. It's full of potholes. It's got major raveling with it. It's, it's not easily passable. It's a road that needs to be basically reconstructed completely. And um, if we continued to fund it at the current levels, that backlog, or excuse me, the failed road condition would increase from about 6% up to about 25%. So a quarter of our roads wow. in the state would be in a very, very, very and, poor and condition. And four times as That's many correct. as currently exist. So people think they have bad roads now, just wait. That's right. Um, wow. Um, so what do we need to do? The second scenario you laid out is what we need to do just to maintain our current uh, street conditions, you know, okay. the PCI rating of 66. Okay, so to do that, we really need to double the funding amount that we have right now. We have about 1.7. We need to be at about 3.3 billion just to hold even to where we are now. And, and that's okay, not necessarily a great place to be, but uh, that's what it would take to do and that. And what would happen to our, our uh, unfunded backlog? The unfunded backlog does get bought down a little bit into that scenario. If we doubled it, it goes down to about $40 billion. Okay, um, but it's not the, the $61 billion you were talking about if we maintain our current level of, of, of funding. That's so correct. A little it, bit better. Yeah. Um, so obviously where we want to get to probably is the kind of the best maintenance practices level, the, the third scenario you lay out. How much is that going to cost? That would be about $7.3 billion a year. So that's about four times as much as, we, a as our current revenue stream. It's a significant amount. Um, what that would do is it would be able to bring the, the street condition up into a good state of repair in the 80s, as well as eliminate the backlog. Um, and just for a point of reference, to identify or to get to a $7.3 billion revenue uh, level, it would equate to something like a $0.54 cents, uh, per gallon increase in the gas tax, just as a, as a touching increase. point. Increase. And currently increase. it's $0.18. Cents, and you have to jump an additional $0.54. That's correct. Cents. Yeah. Wow. Um, you also mentioned, though, that if you, you brought up the best maintenance practices, um, it would significantly lower our maintenance costs, wouldn't it? It does. And so currently we expend about $1.7 billion, as we talked about. Uh, if we were able to make the investment over the 10 years to bring it in a state of good repair, the ongoing maintenance of that system would be about $2.4 billion. So it's a, it's a very small incremental piece that we could then manage going forward. Mm -hmm. But it's, you really got to buy down all this other stuff to get it in it, that it's condition. It's as simple as pay me now or pay me later, yes. I guess. Well, thanks for the overview on current street and road spending. Up next, what about the state's bridges and other essential components of our transportation system, like street lights and, and signals? That conversation in a moment. This is the Maddie Report. There's more to building a transportation system than pavement. There are things like bridges and all the other essential components that get us safely from here to there, things like traffic signals and, and street lights. So what is the cost of maintaining those essential components, and how do we get them up to par? We're talking with Mike Penrose, the president of the County Engineers Association of California, an organization who conducted a statewide local streets needs assessment. So, uh, how much is currently being spent to maintain these essential components of our local streets and roads? Um, and where does the money come from to pay for those things? So currently, the funding level for that is about $1 billion a year. Uh, and the funds for that come from federal, state, and local sources. Almost 58% of the overall funding available uh, for essential components is from local sources, such as local sales tax, general funds, development impact fees, or other revenues. So the, the locals are really carrying a high portion of the uh, responsibility for funding that. You work. know, I was reading your report, and it surprised me to find out that of these essential components, storm drains are the biggest cost, of th about a third right. of these essential components going to just paying for that. Traffic signals are also very expensive. It's about 18%. Mm -hmm. So some big money. You don't think about those things when you're driving on the road, but there, those are costs. So what, is, what would happen if we just maintain the current level of funding? Uh, how much money would we have to spend to kind of bring that part of the transportation system up to par? Okay. Um, well, uh, first of all, those um, essential components of the system will, if we do not find additional funding, will continue to degrade, similar to what we've talked about with the pavement condition. And so the replacement and maintenance costs of those will continue to increase as they get older in their life cycle. 
um, and to actually bring them up to the level of best management practices mm -hmm. and in a good state of repair it would require an additional 21 billion dollars over the next 10 years. Right. right. So unless you want to see lights flashing, you know, red or not working at all, uh, you need to spend some money to fix them. Yeah. But you know, there's also bridges. I think that really worries a lot of people if bridges yeah. fail because they've seen this stuff on the news happened in Minnesota, etc. What are what's the state of, of California bridges? I mean, before let me ask you this: How old are California bridges? Are they relatively new? Or are they relatively old? Well, I think it's fair to say that the overall, the average age of the overall bridges in the state of California on the local system are about 50 years old. Now that has you. Now have, I would consider that young, but yeah, I, but you have. I'm not sure an engineer would. <laughs> <laughs> and oftentimes the design life for a bridge is somewhere on the order of 50 years. Um, okay. Now they generally are running much longer than that, but so uh, so the design they're they're there. They're supposed to be there 50 years. We're already at that point then. Yes, most at, of our bridges. Yes, in terms of an average, okay. we have. Uh, okay. Um, some new bridges, obviously, in the, in the inventory, and some bridges that are older than 80 years in the inventory. Uh, we currently have about 11,800 bridges that are on the local system. Okay. Um, and as I said, I think you could say that the overall average age is about 50 years, but it's, it covers the whole spectrum. But we've got some bridges that are, that are 80 years old? Yes, we have a number of bridges that are well over 80 years. And, and that, that would seem to be well past their normal life. That's correct. They've really exceeded their, uh, you know, their design life. And so those bridges, that segment of our inventory, is really going to come up on a replacement as opposed to a rehab, rehab or maintenance sort of strategy. Because okay, it's very expensive to build a bridge, so I can just imagine what the cost is going to be. That's correct. Um, okay, so what is the current, the bridges that, that are still standing, <laughs> doing well, what is their current condition? Um, how are they holding up? Again, you could say overall the average uh, bridge condition in the state of California is a good condition. Okay. We don't have uh, a lot of infrastructure. That's good to hear, by the it's way. Right. We don't have to be afraid that bridges are going to be falling down or any of that type of thing. Um, but the level of investment that we're putting into it is not staying up. So over time, we'll once again get behind and lose that good condition. And that would be over many years. The, the study actually looks at 10 years and still identifies that at the end of a 10-year period, we would still have good uh, condition overall, but it's declining. But your report also indicated that about 8% of the bridges would have to be replaced during that time. That's correct. Um, you also talk in there in your report about bridges being functionally obsolete. What, what does that mean, functionally obsolete? Functionally obsolete is a case where you have a bridge that is, is maybe too narrow. It's still structurally sound. There's no okay. uh, question about whether the bridge is going to fail, but it doesn't meet current geometric requirements or those types of things. Hold the so. volume of traffic that's necessary. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So we got a bunch of money being spent on bridges right now versus a bunch of money that needs to be spent on bridges. Mm -hmm. How large is the shortfall? What does all this mean? So um, the estimated amount of funding under our current plan with, with the revenue stream that we have available for bridges is about $3 billion over the 10-year period. Okay. The need over that same period is about $4.3 billion to bring everything up okay. into the good state of repair. So we have about a $1.3 billion shortfall over the 10-year... You know, that sounds like a lot of money, but if you look at the state budget, the state budget is well over $100 billion mm -hmm. uh, a year. So, you know, 1% of the state budget would fix our bridges. That's correct. Um, and so, but if we stay on this course, we're going to have a shortfall of $1.3 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the replacement needs, those kinds of things, where, where are the big costs there, the things that need to be done um, for bridges? Is it, is it replacement? Is it deck rehabilitation? What are the kinds of issues that need to be done on bridges? Well, it's, uh, you can do uh, deck rehab, as you talked about, as well as uh, surface treatments where you have cracking and those types of things that we need to just deal with the deck. The biggest costs are full bridge replacements where we have to you know, remove and replace. Yeah, I can yeah, imagine so. it would be quite expensive. Mm -hmm. well, when we come back, we'll discuss some of the options to pay for roads, bridges, and traffic signals and all the rest. That conversation in a moment. This is the Matty Report. There's a reported funding shortfall of about $78 billion for local streets and roads uh, to get them up to par statewide. What can be done to uh, kind of close that funding gap? We're talking with Mike Penrose, the president of the County Engineers Association of California. You know, before we get into, you know, where we can get more money, you, you and your report indicate, listen, there are some efficiencies that could be implemented to stretch those transportation dollars. Um, can you explain? A couple of examples of what's being done now that it will reduce the future costs as we go through and maintain and upgrade this, the road system. One of them is, um, is where we're trying to use the existing roadway materials, uh, reuse them, basically recycle in place. So you don't have to buy new rock, new aggregate, those types of things. You can just bring it back in and use it, reuse it. That's a significant savings and a, um, a methodology is being applied now up and down the state. So that's one of the things that will help buy it down. Uh, the other thing is, is doing more 
um, upfront preventative maintenance to roads that are in better condition. So you make a smaller investment right. and you keep those in place. It's so those the, are kind of two key yeah, things. Pay me now, pay me later, but that's right. really interesting, the, the reuse, um, you could save quite a bit of money. I think in your report they said that potentially $912 billion, dollars, a million dollars, million. sorry, million dollars. Uh, that's still a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so clearly most of the money that comes for local streets and roads uh, comes from state and local sources. So let's talk about the state sources first. Mm -hmm. The main source there is the state uh, gas tax, uh, 18 cents per gallon. It's been that way for, gosh, what, 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, how big a problem is that? It's a huge problem. Mm -hmm. too. Okay. Um, the transportation system size and use has continued to grow over that same 20-year period. Uh, and it's also continued to age while the sales tax that's been applied at 18 cents has stayed flat, hasn't incremented for uh, any, any reasons. Um, in fact, the effective value of the 18 cents per gallon tax or that was established in 1994 in today's dollars is about 7 cents after you adjust it for inflation and fuel efficiencies over that same 20 year period. Less than half it's worth. Less, less than half it's worth. Yeah, now right. you have cars that are more efficient, they're using less gas, electric cars, and so yeah, it's, it's, it's not the income source it used to be. That's correct. Um, so what if the, the gas tax was increased? Um, how much more money would that bring in? Well, it depends what increase we'd be okay. talking about. But if, if as an example, uh, the gas tax had just been indexed for inflation since 1994, okay. um, it would have, it, the rate now currently would be about 28.8 cents per gallon as opposed to 18. That, that would double, almost double, the uh, revenue source that we have now that's coming with it. Um, and that would get us to a situation where we can maintain our roads over the next 10 years at current levels? No. Oh, uh, let's see. It would get, it would get us close. Okay. Um, it, not every one of the dollars from the gas tax uh, gets all the way to the maintenance okay. side of the... So it's, okay. uh, Good point. Yeah, it doesn't do that. Um, well. Doing math quickly in my head here. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so, so one, one, that's one way to do it. Yep. Another option is, are these weight, uh, vehicle weight fees uh, mm -hmm. that go to transportation. So that, some of that money has been diverted yes. um, away from you know, current transportation needs. Um, Using it to, to, I believe, to to pay back some of the transportation bonds. That's correct. Um, how much money are we talking about here? It's about a billion dollars. Now, it started in 2010 when the state's uh, budget was really in some dire straits. Uh, they, they were looking for different pots of money, could. and yeah. right. And so, uh, what they did is they they stripped off the wait fees. They put about a billion dollars against the uh, debt obligation for transportation bonds which uh, is debatable from a lot of perspective as to whether those funds ought to be actually paying that debt obligation given the way in which the state manages debt obligation across all these. So what do you think, all these. how that should be paid? I mean, some people would say, listen, this is a transportation issue, it's a transportation bond, we can use the gas tax for it. What would be your response? My response would be is it should be coming out of the state general funds. Right? Okay. And that's, okay. that's, the, that's the answer across the board that we're, we're basically looking at that. But still, that adjustment has been made. Um, and. Uh, it's, it was reaffirm, reaffirmed in 2011, and I can tell you that counties and cities do have some concerns that if those funds were uh, brought back into the transportation arena and made available to the to the transportation infrastructure, For current use. Well, what mm -hmm. would that do then to the general uh, general fund obligation that funds other important issues and programs that relate to county and city services? So yeah. it's a problem. It's yeah. a real problem. So there's there's other places for money too. One is uh, Assembly Speaker Tony Atkins is talking about a road user fee of about a dollar a week. Mm -hmm. um, how would that work, and is it likely to happen? How much money would it generate? Okay. So um, first of all, I would like to say that we appreciate Speaker Atkinson's leadership in this arena, as well as the governor's and uh, Senator Jim Beals immense credit for getting the state government focused on the massive funding problem that we have as it relates to transportation. Okay, okay. and how do you... <laughs> <laughs> That's important because there's a lot going on mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a number of arenas. Um, so currently with, um, with uh, Speaker Atkins' proposal, we don't really know how she intends to implement that. The, the discussion w has been that if it did, if it was one dollar a week, it would generate about 1.8 billion dollars. Okay. The allocation and distribution of those funds is not yet been identified. It, it, it would be a part of what we need, but what I think we need to highlight is we need a much broader uh, spectrum. Well, let so. me ask you one last question. We only got 10 <laughs> seconds wrapped in this segment, but I want to ask you about self-help counties. Counties can impose a tax on themselves. What do you think about that idea? Well, we think it's a good idea. The, the counties that are not imposing a self-help uh, tax at this point, though, there's about 16 of them that are left. They're going to be small revenue generators because the ones that are now doing it, the 20 or so that are, encompass about 80 percent of the state's population. Right, well, so while it will bring some revenue, again, it's just a piece of what's needed. Piece of the puzzle. So yeah. the bottom line, there are lots of ways to pay for this. I want to thank our guest, Mike Penrose, the president of the County Engineers Association of California. If you want to stay up to date on state and local politics, you can sign up for our free e-newsletter, The Maddie Daily, by logging on to the Maddie Institute website at maddieinstitute.org. This is Mark Kepler for The Maddie Report. Thanks for joining us.
The views expressed in the Maddie Report are those of the individuals participating in the program and do not necessarily reflect those of the California Channel or the Maddie Institute. If you'd like to share your thoughts about the points and opinions expressed on the Maddie Report, visit our website at maddieinstitute.org.